IPv4, or Internet Protocol version 4, is one of the most common protocols for connecting computers together on a network. In spite of this, it can be really confusing for beginners to see their first IP address, as it looks just like a random string of decimals. Today, we'll take a look at how IPv4 works, and how you can use it to calculate and navigate around a network, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Internet Protocol version 4, or IPv4, is one of the most common protocols used to connect computers together on a network. Now, the way this works is that every device that wants to access the internet, either via Ethernet or Wi-Fi, will have a MAC address, kind of similar to a serial number that goes along with the device and isn't dependent on the network. Now, this will be combined with an IP address, which is assigned by the router and basically is the, you can consider it like a street address that packets are delivered to on the local network. Now, if you transition to a bunch of different networks, maybe at home or at school, your MAC address will stay the same, but in general, your IP address will probably be different because it depends on the other devices on the network. Now, IPv4 uses subnetting to determine how many different possible addresses are on the network and what the range of them is. So understanding the way IPv4 works can dramatically increase the amount of efficiency you have when using scanning tools like Nmap, because you don't have to scan through every possible IP address. You can just stick to the ones you know exist in the maybe Class C network that you have. Now, a Class C network is a commercial network that generally has around 254 hosts that can be connected. And this is the most common setup we'll see, and we'll be using it as an example today. Now, to follow along, you need a Linux system, although Windows will work with, with some tools, but we'll be using a tool called IPCalc in order to get some of the binary calculations, so you may need to find a binary to decimal calculator in order to keep up. Once you have one handy, then we can begin. Now, to get started understanding IPv4 addresses, it's good to know when they might be useful. For example, a typical tool to use when you join a network would be Nmap, but without any arguments or knowing how to calculate the network range, running this tool just isn't very interesting. In fact, let's give it a try. I'm currently connected to a Wi-Fi network, and if I just type Nmap, then I get nothing. The reason for this is I need to specify the network range, or tell it which IP address I want to scan. And since I haven't done that, then it looks like I really don't have any options in terms of being able to really see anything on this network at all. Now, I could go ahead and scan myself, um, but it knowing, and here you can see a couple examples, and these all include a either domain or a IP address to scan in order to get some results back. So basically, if you're running any hacking tool, you're going to need to identify where it's pointed. Now, there are a couple workarounds or shortcuts. For example, if you want to do an ARP scan uh, on a local network, you can type ARP scan TAC L. However, this doesn't really get around the problem that without knowing the range of IP addresses on the network, it's very difficult to tell a tool where to scan. So to solve that, let's take a look at our IP address and we can get started understanding what it's for. So let's type ifconfig. And when I scroll up, I can see that on my MacBook computer, I am connected to the local internet with this IPv4 address. Now you can see the, uh, it just says INET and then 192.168.2.2. And what this means is that's my local IP address, meaning the one specifically on this network I'm connected to right now. So great. While I have this local address, that doesn't really give me a lot of information about other devices on the network, but I can now run a successful Nmap scan against myself. So if I just want to copy this here and then type Nmap, and then the address that we found, then hey, at the very least, we can run a scan on ourselves. But that's not too useful, so we might want to dig a little bit deeper on what these numbers mean, because an IP address, or an IPv4 address, is just four uh, digits that are, well, four integers, which are numbers that are actually representing binary, that indicate a network address that's actually pretty easy to understand. Now, to understand how to convert these numbers into binary, we can use a simple binary calculator, which I will pull up now. This is called IPCalc, 
And if you want to use ipcalc, you can download it via GitHub, or sometimes it's even possible to just do it with a simple apt install ipcalc. It looks like it wants Java, but we don't want to do that, so we're not going to. Anyway, so for this example, we can see that we've converted this address into binary, and we also get the subnet mask. Now, the subnet mask is, in this case, determined by the uh, default class, which is a class C internet. But in general, the way that you can determine the subnet mask is by looking right here. You can see 255, 255, 2550. This can be really confusing, but here you can see that it is just a really long list of ones and then some zeros on the other side. So what does this mean? We have the IP address, we have the net mask. What does this mean in terms of determining how many hosts are available or how many IP addresses we need to scan? Well, the address is actually divided into two different parts. And the mask here is telling us which parts we're reading as the host section, aka computers connected to the network, and which part is identifying different networks, allowing us to maybe communicate with a whole bunch of networks that are all linked together. Now, in general, we're just going to be scanning for hosts. So if we see an, a network with this particular net mask, which is basically all ones except for eight zeros at the end, then we know that we're dealing with something that has a maximum of 254 possible uh, hosts connected. Now, how did we come to this number? Well, it comes down to the way that binary is counted. If we're looking to convert two into binary, then we need to look at the way that binary is converted back and forth into integer numbers. So here, if we want to represent two, the way binary counts is if we have a whole bunch of zeros, we start at one, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 128. So humans count in base 10, but binary is base 2, meaning in order to go from a 1 to a 2, there is no 2 to put here. So instead, we just carry the 1 over and represent 2 by 1, 0. You can see that this maps to the 2 in the last part of the IP address. If you want to represent a larger number, like 168, we just subtract it from the various available options, which start with 128 here. Uh, we can't subtract 64 from it, but we can subtract 32. And then we can also, uh, we can't subtract 16, but we can subtract 8. So that's what gives us this binary number here from this initial 168 here. Now, this is a much easier way of representing all these binary numbers. So in general, this is the way that we'll represent an IPv4 address. But you should be aware that a net mask is basically uh, calculated by looking at all the continuous ones and then coming up with a, in this example, slash 24, because we have 24 continuous ones that tell us the whole first three out of four parts of this IP address are all dedicated to the network mask not the actual range of IP addresses that can be given out to various hosts that are trying to join the network. Now, there's also a couple IP addresses that are reserved on a network, and this will be the broadcast IP address, which is the highest possible IP address, as well as the network address, which uh, should actually be the lowest possible address on the network. Now, the host min is the actual first possible address that a host can take, and this will almost always be taken up by the router. So if you want to quickly be able to access a router, this is probably the best place to start. By calculating the network range, you can very quickly see what the host min would be. Because in this case, if our network uh, it calculates to 192.168.20, slash 24, then the first possible IP address that a host could have is 192.168.21. We just increment it up by one. In fact, we can just keep going all the way up to 254, because if we go any higher, then we hit this reserved broadcast number, and if we go any lower than uh, 192.168.21, then we get this network ID, which is not really what we want instead. So now we can see that it's pretty easy to see what this actually means if we want to learn more about the IP address. But if we go ahead and use ipcalc and instead specify a different network mask by using slash eight instead, we can see the difference between these two networks. Here, we can see that only this part is used for identifying the network, and the rest of this is all reserved for various hosts that can connect to the network. Meaning instead, we have a whole lot, what is that, 16 million possible uh, IP addresses that can be assigned on this particular network. 
Now you may see this on much larger networks, but in general, we'll probably only be dealing with a slash 24 if you're looking at a small business network or a home network uh, when you're running this sort of calculation. Now that's really interesting, but how do we use this to actually hack better? Well, we can go ahead and take this network range once we discover it and use it to run our nmap scan that we were doing before. So now if we run nmap and include the network range, it's going to include all 256 possible hosts on the network. And while all of them might not be up, it means that we don't need to go and scan every theoretical IP address in existence. We can specify the ones that are available and you know possible at all on this IP address range by understanding what IPv4 means and how we can use it with the various tools available for Kali Linux or other networking uh, kind of tools. Anytime you join a new network, understanding how to calculate the IPv4 network range can save you a lot of time. While there are a lot of tools out there for doing this automatically, it's a lot faster to simply specify the network range you want to scan rather than going after absolutely everything. Failure to do so and specify exactly what you're going after can lead to incredibly long scans using tools that are common. So knowing what the minimum and maximum host address or how to specify the network range when using a tool like Nmap or some sort of exploitation tool can dramatically reduce the amount of scanning that you need to do. While IPv4 is relatively simple, IPv6 is a lot more complicated, so we won't be going into that further. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.